Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all the day's latest church apostasy and end-time news. Now, Trad Cat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit, and I'm doing my best to keep you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima. My good friends, please subscribe and click the notification button right here on YouTube. In the event that my YouTube channel goes down, uh, I encourage you all to make sure you get to the other platforms in which you can listen to these talks, whether it's Veterans Today or Minds.com, PewTube, BitChute. Uh, we also are now on iTunes and Google Play. And, of course, you can find these podcasts slash radio shows on SoundCloud.com uh, as well as the sister site TradCatNight.org. I encourage you all to get to TradCatNight.blogspot.com. Daily, you can search Trad Cat Night across any social media outlet for all of the latest news and information. And folks, if you'd like to have a special guest uh, on this radio show, I encourage you to send your suggestions uh, to the contact section of uh, the website itself. And today, my good friends, is April 5th, 2018. A lot to discuss. We've got a first-time guest, very special guest, uh, very hot, if you will, on uh, YouTube these days with his talks. Uh, he is the editor of the Hat Trick Letter for the Golden Jackass.com website, Dr. Jim uh, Willie. And he comes from the U.S. industry with three main fields of statistics covered. He earned a Ph.D. in statistics at Carnegie Mellon University in 1980. Uh, three fields of specialty during the career years were quality control and manufacturing, marketing research, in computer technology and sales forecasting and retail. Uh, since 2004, the Golden Jackass has been running the Hat Trick Letter, a newsletter that focuses on gold currencies, central banks, and the economies. Now, his numerous forecasts on important developments towards the global breakdown have gained international intention, uh, attention, if not notoriety. The Golden, or excuse me, the current major forecasts include the rejection of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve, the insula installation of the Eurasian trade zone, uh, the flipping east by Germany, Turkey, Saudi, uh, Japan, and the return of the gold standard. We truly could go on and on with uh, Dr. Jim's background. Uh, we've got a lot to discuss today, Dr. Jim Willie. I don't know where you want to begin uh, as it relates to the things that we are currently seeing within the realm of uh the economy are things there are some who are proposing that maybe trump can stave things off a little while longer you and i both know that this is a ponzi scheme in place are things truly turning around economically or do the statistics truly show that we are headed for a massive reset or collapse here even over the next few months the u.s economy is in a tremendous state of dilapidation decay, corruption, and absent industry, along with the complete loss of memory on what it means to have capital development. That's a big statement to make. What I'm trying to say is that we got too much debt, too much corruption, and we have no idea how to build businesses anymore. All we know how to do is wage war, conduct bond fraud, and terrorize the population. That's all we know how to do. <laughs> yeah, we see. We know how to do handouts. We know how to open the gates for foreigners to come in so they can vote Democrat. We have no idea how to build businesses. Now, when people ask me, can, can Trump stave it off? They're assuming that Trump has a good deal of power, which is very incorrect. Trump is a player. Trump is trying to be a leader in a, on, a, on a ship that's just been absolutely overturned and converted to corrupt means. It's a pirate ship. It's not going to sail for the U.S. population benefit. It is a pirate ship. Um, they're going around and, and, oh gosh, I could get on with silly analogies all day, <laughs> but um, they're trying to promote the story now that, that we've got a, a returning economy toward growth and 
they, they need to spin this story to raise interest rates. It's really quite hilarious because we're in our 12th consecutive year of recession. This is a brutal recession. We have, you don't get out of a recession by engaging in quantitative easing and hypermonetary inflation to cover the U.S. government debt while we're running a $600 billion trade deficit. You, you, you have to build your economy. Remember Trump in 2016 ran on a campaign of reindustrializing the nation and having a trillion dollar uh, campaign, uh, what's the word, uh, project for the infrastructure. Rebuild the roads, rebuild uh, high-speed rail, rebuild port facilities, rebuild broadband, broadband uh, networks. We haven't done anything. We haven't even begun. We're not even in a position to go back to a gold standard with legitimate currency. First of all, we don't have the gold. Second of all, we have a $600 billion trade deficit annually. So if we go on the gold standard and, and back our, our dollar with, you know, who knows, 10, 12, 15,000 tons of gold, God knows where that will come from. What are they going to do? Seize it back from Bush, Clinton, and Reuben who stole it all? I don't think so. If we go back to a gold standard, Eric, in the first year, we'll lose 13,000 tons of gold. We're not even in a position to go back to the gold standard. We don't have any idea how to rebuild the economy. We lie about economic growth. We're stuck in a recession. We got 22, 23, 24% unemployment that they're calling full employment. We have no idea what we're doing anymore. We're a derelict at sea facing a big waterfall. Now, speaking about Trump, uh, let's shift things slightly here, uh, talking about uh, geopolitics, uh, if you will. Uh, I've always argued, and again, I I'm not on the Trump train personally. Uh, you can speak for yourself, uh, Dr. Jim. Uh, I, I believe that the New World Order controls the left and the right. I, I don't believe who, you know, he is who he is, says he is, uh, per se. Um, I would argue that we have been the right arm of Israel, militarily speaking. We, of course, seen what has transpired recently with Trump getting rid of Tillerson. We now got super volcano Pompeo in. We've got Haley. She's talking about how Russia might use chemical uh, chemical warfare on New York. We've got a uh, rock pop star Michael Bolton in there as well, neocon. I mean, you know, some of the things Trump does seems to be good on the surface level. And at other times you're kind of scratching your heads, you know, scratching your head like, what in the world's going on? Well, uh, I'll regard that as a question and comment that Trump has an unusual ability. If I had to put a number between zero and 100 for percentage confidence that, that Trump is on the right track, doing the right thing, defending the nation, restoring the republic, trying to get things on a national level on an even keel to remove the corruption and, and, and get effective government in. From zero to 100, I'd say he's, he's around 70 or 75. That's how much I trust his actions. But I will say this. In order to achieve his goals, it seems like he has to put forward some of the clowns and corrupt players and let them be in charge you know, for a few days, you know, geologically speaking, to let them fail, to let them represent the fascist neocon position and let them look ridiculous, have obscene failures, and then move them off the stage with a big ass hook. And then someone more reasonable can come in after the neocons have been tarnished. That's what I think is going on. And as long as he's under severe attack left and right, I think he'll put forth another Bolton to make him available in full view to look like an effing fool and then get him off the stage. And if he's still behind the curve, put another effing clown out there. Let him look like a warmongering idiot 
and get him off the stage in another several weeks. That's the task that Trump has, and very few people, I believe, are of sufficient mental capacity to comprehend what he's trying to do. While in the background, he had a gold advocate, uh, gosh, I can't think of exactly what her name is, Jane Scholten, something like that. Uh, that was his economic analyst during the campaign. Don't know what happened to her. He brought in Nuchin from Goldman Sachs. And, and bear in mind that, that many people make a quick judgment. Oh, he brought in Nooch, another, another G Sachs, GS guy. Well, he was more like a Hollywood producer. Is he really Goldman Sachs or is he a Hollywood producer? Is he capable to do the job at Treasury or is he just kind of a, a figurehead for show? I don't know. The most amazing thing about Trump and the perceptions is, is how few people comprehend that 500 generals and admirals were dismissed by Clinton, baby Bush, and Obama, and they started a movement. It was an organization at first with an annual meeting in Idaho just for dismissed admirals and generals. It was called America First. So on Inauguration Day, Trump comes in, announces that he has a plan to restore America, and it's called America First. If that's not a military coup, I'll eat your shorts. Time to wake up, people. This is a military coup against the globalist flat fascist neocons to dismiss the Rockefeller, Rothschild, Soros, Bush, Clinton gangsters and restore the republic. This is not an easy matter after 24 years of rule, plus by the narco presidents, plus four more by Papa Bush after he had Reagan shot and served pretty much seven of the eight years as a stand-in to Reagan. So we've had 31 years, well, more than that, 24 plus 4 is 28 plus 7, 35 years of narco presidency that included most of the Reagan years. Of course, Reagan had some things to do, some things to say, some place, places to go, but only with permission by Papa Bush. His administration is not well understood. They tried to kill him, and they, they almost destroyed his brain cavity with microwaves. Then you had... Two terms with Clinton, who's very, oh gosh, American public still hasn't figured out who Bill Clinton is. Son of Winthrop Rockefeller, a bastard son. Word has it that during the campaign he had his mother murdered because she knew too much. Then Hillary comes on the scene with no qualifications for New York senator. Becomes state secretary of state with no qualification, commits treason left, right, up, and down, and is protected by the whole system. Baby Bush, the biggest moron who ever sat in the Oval Office, an IQ probably 80 or so, was a stand-in, oversaw, presided 9-11 and the inside bank job to steal the contents of the World Trade Center. $100 billion worth of diamonds, $100 billion worth of bonds, $100 billion worth of gold. Then we have a, a, a Kenyan come in to continue, and, and he, he, oh, i got to give Obama credit. He managed to switch the party alliance of the neocons to the Democrat Party. And, and it was cleverly done, and uh, you, you got to give credit where it's due. They brought in all kinds of immigrants and, you know, you know bring in all uh, your huddled masses of poor, your, your huddled refuse. Okay, that's the Statue of Liberty. We brought them in to, from Somalia so they could vote in Ohio. All the illegal immigrants were urged to vote Democrat. That's an easy task to do. Oh, the Democrat is the party for the minority. Yeah, okay. All right, Trump's trying to reverse 30 years 
of fascist neocon integration and installation. There's a lot of political commentary about the several hundred important appointments that Obama made or was signing off when his masters and controllers uh, directed his activity toward appointments. These are very important people. They're, they're State Department officials, they're FBI officials, they're Justice Department officials, they're Pentagon officials, they're judges. This is very difficult for Trump to reverse. And uh, word according to Ben Fulford, I mean, I, I got to give him some credit too. He has a lot of courageous statements to make, and, and many of the things that he's been saying the last two or three years are finally becoming more visible, not exactly taking shape and form, but he reports that Trump has already survived three assassination attempts. These are not in the news because the news is part and parcel of the fascist neocon administration network. I'd like to see CNN, New York Times, and Washington Post all shut down for sedition. Since when do news networks since when are they permitted to continue, Eric, after being involved in the conspiracy to falsify a Russian story regarding Trump? They're all in on it, those <laughs> yeah. three. Yeah, no question about that. Um, you know, folks, whether you think Trump is the real deal or not, and again, I, I always argue that he was the only possible a uh, person you could vote for as a Christian. There's no way you could vote it for pro-death Clinton, uh, if you will. I, I think a good number of people would argue, uh, Jim, that Trump will be the fall guy, if you will, for this reset. But I also argue, too, the revolution that's coming in this country, which should be obvious. We're seeing all these various movements pop up. We're seeing all kinds of animosity arising between you know this group and that group, conservatives, uh, liberals, blacks versus white, north versus the south. This is what the New World Order wants. And then also war in general, which seems to be looming on the horizon. Uh, again, this is why I talk about the Fatima message so often, because in this it basically depicts uh, Russia losing it. Various nations will be annihilated, and there's actually certain Catholic prophecies which suggest that we are going to get it from Russia specifically. Uh, uh, I mean that militarily speaking. Uh, but let's talk about the, the reset coming. You know, is this going to happen the third and fourth quarter, as so many economists like uh, V the Gorilla and Lynette Zhang is saying? Um, do, do we still foresee this happening in the upcoming months? And what, what will trigger it? What is the ultimate trigger to this collapse? Well, first of all, I'd like to make a comment about what you regarded as kind of an inevitable war. I don't think war is even remotely possible. Um, I got my reasons why. Uh, to begin with, the people who installed Trump at the White House are the white hats of the Pentagon. And it's pretty safe to say that none of the following is united. They're all divided. The Pentagon, the FBI, Langley, Department of State, Department of Justice, they're all divided. So the white hats of the Pentagon who installed Trump and prevented the vote fraud by the way, the NSA, National Security Administration, put out a report a couple months ago. It was absolutely astounding. They said Trump, in without voter fraud, would have won 50 million to 58 million, a 12 million margin. Okay? That's how corrupted the vote process was. So, those who installed and and enabled Trump to win are not going to have a war. They might permit a, uh, a defense secretary to talk bombastically and to talk about how, you know, we will confront Russia, but we won't. We can talk, we can have lots of different officials like the secretary of state and uh, maybe uh, some of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at, at, the, uh, at the Pentagon, the ones who are faking out the public a little bit or faking out the Washington po politicians into saying that we've got superiority militarily, but we don't! We might 
might have lots of clowns in the Congress. You might have television reporters, commentators, putting out messages about how we're going to, you know, put Russia into shape, how we're going to keep them out of the action and keep them cut off. But we won't, because we're not strong enough. We're an, an indebted, semi-dead economic nation. We've had numerous demos that the U.S. military is second rate. We've had numerous nuclear near uh, detonations that have been prevented and obstructed. These clowns who speak bombastically and aggressively with bellicose words, they don't know what they're talking about. I don't care about biblical predictions and prophecies. I'm well versed. We're not there yet. I hearken back to John Adams. No, I'm sorry, the education of Henry Adams. It's about 200 years ago. They thought the rapture, they thought the end of the world was coming in a few years. They were wrong. Had a couple hundred more to go. We're not going to have a war. Because we lose in the first two hours. Yeah, but Jim, Jim, don't you think that's that's what the New World Order wants? I mean, the whole plan is essentially to have the United States integrated in the New World Order. And I, I agree, although I don't agree with you, we're not going to go to war. I could see war happening very easily over the next few years. Um that ultimately we want, we have to be integrated into the system. That's why we're thinning out economically. They're trying to pre implode, you know, our, 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 on the economic level, but also militarily, we're seeing us being spread out all throughout the world. I mean, then on top of that, you add the whole gun control uh, situation into the factor. We obviously know these Democrats and these liberals want to take away our guns for to make an eventual takeover all that more easier. And then we, we could also get into the FEMA camps, which are on record, too. That's not conspiracy theory. That's just a fact now. Uh, there is a pre-plan in place, if you will, for the eventual takeover uh, of this country. And the reason why I say that war is likely, I mean, we can push aside prophecy in, in the Bible, is these globalist gyms say on record they want to reduce the world's population by 90%. I don't 90%. care what they want. They're not in control anymore. Haven't you figured that out? You don't think the globalists are in control? No, I don't. Haven't you figured that out? No, Jim. They're very much in control. They're, con they're controlling and pulling the strings. Very much so. Who's, oh, really? who, who's controlling the world then if the globalists aren't controlling, you know, behind the scenes? Who's, what, makes you think, what makes you think one entity controls the world? Well, it's not just one entity, but it's uh, an entity that has other entities underneath it, which are basically pulling the strings. Are you aware that, that a good portion, like half of the middle-level globalists, have either been murdered or bankrupted? Are you aware of that? Sure, but what, what does that have to do with eventually getting this plan across? Well, you asked me who I thought was in control because you're making a strong statement that the globalists are, yet now you're agreeing with me that the middle level of the same group of globalists that doesn't prove your point right. wiped out. That doesn't prove your point right, though, Jim. No, it, it, you're making an inconsistent statement there. I'm saying that for the last three or four or five years, the middle level of the globalists have been converted, have flipped, have been bankrupt, or have been murdered. Therefore, they're not in control anymore. So who's in control? That's if what I'm asking. If they're in control, how if did Trump win? How did how, Trump win? Trump's a globalist. I don't. He's a. He's a. He's another puppet. He's another New World Order Freemasonic thirty third degree puppet who's in on with the Zionists. You could see who he's. You know, got his financing from these various Zionists and Jews. He's a part of this Chabad Jewish death cult that Trump's a part. Uh, that uh, Putin's a part of. They're all players. He's just another puppet. He's another stooge that they have put into place to think to fool basically conservative types to ultimately set up a revolution in this country. That's exactly what they want. They want people to think that he's draining the swamp. He's a part of the swamp. He's he's not someone that's truly against the globalists, if you will. He's friends with the Clintons. He's a part of the pedophilia scandal. He's all in on this stuff. He's, you know. Well, I, I, don't, I don't agree. It's your show. Well, I'm just saying, Joe. I, mean, I think you're way off base, but it's your show. Well, it doesn't matter what I think. I mean, people know what I think. You know, I'm just trying to pick your brain. I just, 
I, I just don't agree with you that the globalists are not in control and there's not going to be war ultimately. I mean, I think that we're, ve we're very, very, very close. Although I will agree with you on this level that um, they are using the threat of war and they're using the war on terrorism to ultimately stage this one world religion and to solidify the police state, right? They're taking away more liberties. But ultimately, the, 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 the globalists, they have said very profoundly that they want to reduce the world's population. And it makes sense because if we are very close to this whole mark of the beast system, which I believe we are, Jim, due to, uh, you know, the cryptocurrencies moving into the digital economy, just like the, uh, you know, the apocalypse says that they can't control, you know, seven or eight billion people. They have to reduce the world's population, whether it's through epidemics, whether it's through war, whether it's through through any of these other areas that I talk about on this show, it just doesn't make sense that, you know, you know, maybe it's not going to happen in a few years. I could be wrong on that, Jim. But well, the United I, States economy has a, a very big new factor for reducing its population. That's opioid sure. overdose. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, the system might just take care of itself without the globalists you know, running things and killing off millions. I, I don't know. I, I don't engage in that line of thinking. I think that the absent coordination and effectiveness of the economy is going to lead to some starvation. Oh, yeah. I think the pension, the pension ruin and, and maybe some backtracking on Social Security is going to result in a lot of deaths in the United States. Sure. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a wide war. We have a war in Yemen, a, U a war in Syria, and a war in Ukraine. And I don't think we're going to get much in more in the way of war. I think that the, the dislocations are going to be very tragic for a lot of people. But uh, I, I don't buy into the gun control. It's going to backfire. It's not going to succeed. The globalists are trying a lot of different things, and hardly any of them are working. The word is out now about GMO foods. The word is out now about the toxins and the chemtrails. Sure. The word is out now about voter fraud. Just where on earth, Eric, do you think they're making good progress? Well, there's no doubt that there's certainly an awakening, but that still doesn't mean that in a last-ditch effort, if you will, they're not going to try to pull off uh, ver you know, various tactics. I mean, one of which um, you know, is this whole UFO agenda. I mean, that's another way that they're going to try to globalize uh, and, and get everyone to fall in for this whole united humanity spiel, uh, this new Tower of Babel. They're not going to unite anything. They can't even unite themselves. They're fighting among themselves now. I don't buy any of your arguments. Well, you would be going against Scripture. That that would be for sure, Dr. Jim. I mean, uh, you know... Oh, don't, don't throw that line at me, sir. We're almost done with this interview. All right, we're going to end it here, Jim. I'm really, yeah, I'm kind of fed up with you already, so we're going to end this. Yeah.